welcome back YouTube. I told you guys I got some more Dragon Ball Z content. So the title of this video is going to be, Is Vegeta Stronger Than Goku? Or has Vegeta surpassed Goku? I'm kind of still working on the name. But I'm going to watch my boy self uh, video and see what he says. Because he got Goku versus Vegeta. But I'm probably going to title mine something different. And the honest truth. So we'll see what he says. Um, and then I'm going to capitalize him reliably oh i hope i said that word right i'm trying to use big words um collaborate with what he's saying and uh see if what he said makes sense and doesn't make sense but use everything my boy self says it used to be true or not anyway However, so let's check this out whatever him right, and Goku actually phone, so do hear, end up fighting the, the, the results words. aren't so simple and in fact even though goku has the advantage throughout usually 90 percent of the show Whenever they do fight, the results are never 90% in Goku's favor. And in fact, most people would argue that Vegeta seems to be the winner most of the time. So, for instance, even though Goku had all of this training leading up to the Saiyan Saga, he had all these masters. He's trained with Master Roshi, he trained with Korin, he trained with the Guardian of Earth. He's trained with basically the god of the North Quadrant of the Universe, North Kai. He's learned the Kaioken, which can literally amplify all of his abilities. He's learned the Spirit Bomb, which lets him gather the energy of many other organisms, and including his friends, to use it as an attack. He trained on King Kai's planet, which is basically the equivalent of thousands of years of training, in his own words. And he's also drinking the Ultra Divine Water, which essentially is a minor potential unlock, uh, which sort of unleashed a lot of his Saiyan potential within him and allowed him to fight King Piccolo, which probably furthered his potential growth as well. In all of my assignments, oh, I love no. to use Grammarly because... Denied. When we see people like Ultimate Gohan train in Super, uh, when your potential is unleashed, you seem to get higher strength gains. And this is also shown with Krillin as well. When Krillin gets his potential unleashed on Namek, even though he's only a human, he goes from about a power level of 13,000 when fighting Goldo to 75,000 fighting second form Frieza, implying that he just sort of grew that much stronger just fighting, even though he's not a Saiyan. His biology doesn't just make him stronger like that. So that's a great example about how your potential being unleashed in really any way, even though, you know, Elder Guru or whatever is nothing compared to the Elder Kai unleashing Gohans. How can increase it? So you can see that Goku had a lot of advantages going into their first battle against Vegeta, and yet Vegeta was still a lot stronger. Goku had a power level of around 8,000, and Vegeta had a power level of around 18,000. And then, of course, Goku, using Kaioken times 3, multiplying his power by 3 times, was able to beat around Vegeta. And even then, Vegeta was able to so survive so long 000. that Goku began to get worn down. And by the time they were having a Gallic Gun versus Kamehameha beam struggle for the fate of the Earth, he was literally going to vaporize Earth to beat Goku. It seemed like Vegeta actually was holding his own against someone who should be a lot more powerful than him. And then Goku has to unleash a Kaioken times 4 Kamehameha, 32,000 power level versus a guy with a power level of 18,000 just to fend him off and then when vegeta gets launched back and after this vegeta is arguably still battle ready and in fact he fights many z fighters and still has energy to spare to become an uzaru but one thing that's interesting in that king kai and goku both know is that goku after this kaioken times four his body is completely ripped apart implying that Vegeta may have been able to just go down there and just keep fighting until Goku was worn down because Goku really didn't have the endurance any longer to keep spamming Kaioken times three or four while Vegeta, yeah. while he was injured. No, it's crazy. That is actually true. If y'all read the manga and watch the Dragon Ball Z, the Japanese, uh, ooh, excuse me. It is implied that uh, uh, Goku... Uh, body could not withstand Kaioken. This is but that's just because he had just learned the technique. He wasn't able to fully grasp on it, to train and master it until he got to the Freezer saga, which he was in space for like three, six months. He was training in a spaceship and like I forgot how much gravity Goku trained in. But it was enough to where his body was doable to withstand the technique. It's really not so apparent how injured he was. And even then when he does eventually use a power ball 
he basically just crushes Goku, and if we're using unfair techniques as an argument, Goku is literally using a technique that unfairly multiplies his power level that Vegeta doesn't have, as well as using techniques such as the Spirit Bomb, which allows him to gather energy from outside forces and influences to help him fight Vegeta. And Vegeta, all in all, I'm going to be straight up honest, even if it was just 1v1, he would have beaten Goku in pretty much every single way imaginable. The only way Goku might be able to win is Solar Flaring base Vegeta, getting a Spirit Bomb ready and then launching it at him. That's really the only... But you know, a lot of people agree on that fight that Vegeta technically won that fight. Vegeta never actually really lost that fight. I don't know why, but, but it's not that... As the fandom, we know Vegeta won that fight. It's the fact that Vegeta knows he lost that fight. To him, it was a loss. Which is why he couldn't let it happen again. Conceivable way, but otherwise Vegeta kind of did beat him in their first battle. The next time they fight, it is Super Saiyan 2 Majin Vegeta now, versus... this fight is different. We couldn't really see who won this fight to Super Saiyan 2 Majin Vegeta versus Super Saiyan 2 Goku. We couldn't really see who won this fight because... Goku had convinced Vegeta to, that they need to stop Boo first, and then Goku was like, yeah, then I'll fight you. But then Vegeta has to go and get a cheap shot and knock him out before they're even able to finish their fight. Basically, a angel undead Goku who was brought back from the afterlife for a tournament in the Boo Saga mm -hmm. uh, in Super Saiyan 2 as well. Now, this Super Saiyan 2... Basically, dead body Goku basically has just the amount of same unfair advantages that Majin Vegeta has. Majin Vegeta having a weird, durable Majin body like Spopovich did versus Videl, where he can literally have his neck snapped. And Goku having a weird, more durable undead body. And this undead, stronger body is noted during the Boo fights later when Vegeta gets revived and Goku's like, Hey dude, you're not dead anymore. Like... Your body is like more susceptible to damage and we see this in the afterlife and many other things so basically they were completely even when they're in this battle the only difference being that goku arguably should have more fighting knowledge with his mentors he has instant transmission and he should have an advantage over vegeta yet vegeta arguably has the upper hand and in fact some people think vegeta is actually stronger than goku in that battle yet he's not they're actually equal they're actually stated to be equal numerous times. Yeah, Akira Toriyama actually came out. Uh, hopefully, Seth shows this in his video that Vegeta and Goku are even in this fight. And I saw a lot of YouTube videos where people were saying, uh, well, technically, they actually are not because Goku was holding back and Goku had the power to go Super Saiyan 3. But since he didn't use it, they were technically even. Now, if Goku had went Super Saiyan 3, he would have obviously smacked Vegeta. Obviously, but they would have drained all his time and then he had to go back to heaven. Yet yeah, Vegeta is arguably beating Goku, who should just have more advantages than him. Now, Goku was holding back uh, due to this, yep, and this is due to is. like a whole character arc with Vegeta. Uh, not needing to realize that Goku, even if he has all these powers, he's not the one who can save the day by himself. And basically, Vegeta was still trying to follow only in Goku's footsteps. Even when he fights Majin Buu after the battle, you see him mimicking Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, you see him mimicking Goku's actions, you see him trying to do everything to basically be the main character, and he's not trying to explore his own power. So narratively speaking, he can never be like the top guy. So yes, Goku still had Super Saiyan 3, but when it came to their actual fight, Super Saiyan 2 versus Super Saiyan 2, you know, the fair fight, Vegeta was kind of winning low-key. Now, the fight never concluded, Vegeta just catches him off guard, but... Even then, they then again sort of get into it after the Dragon Ball Super Battle of Gods arc. And in this arc, basically, we see in Fukatsu no F or even the Universe 6 training arcs that basically Vegeta, despite, you know, not having any god ritual amps or any BS like that, he basically reaches Goku's god level in about six months of training with no help. He does it all by himself and he reaches the same exact level as Goku. However, one thing I'll say for Goku here is that Goku seems to be getting the hang more of his creative techniques and the things he can employ in battle. And in Super, his fighting style really does evolve to the now, point where- I'm gonna tell y'all why I don't like this, the anime version of Goku versus Hit, because in the manga, they have Goku go Super Saiyan God first, then Super Saiyan Blue, because him going Super Saiyan God in anime made no sense to me 
if he's just showing off his raw technique. And Vegeta also does the same thing. He goes Super Saiyan God. Well, no, he doesn't go Super Saiyan God. He goes Super Saiyan Blue first. And then Goku goes Super Saiyan God. Damn Blue. Because he's catching hit off guard. Because Super Saiyan God is supposed to be like a speed boost. And Blue is more like the perfected, perfect key control. And that's basically what, what that what he was doing to hit. He was like catching hit off guard because he was like, because in that form, in blue form, Goku strikes are more stronger than in his Super Saiyan God form. Which Vegeta was just, I don't know, I guess you could say he was slow or he he just didn't know. But he, but that but that was besides the point because Goku had to figure out what ability hit had or hacks he had, you know, because he would just, well, just skipping through time like it was normal. But a lot of people are going to say that's like a huge speed feat. Some people would say, no, that's not a speed feat. I don't know. Because it's kind of like, it kind of is, but it's kind of not. And it's like, well, if that's not a speed feat, I don't know what it is. Because, like, if you think about it, hit is like, like taking time itself, storing up inside his body. And then Goku goes Kyle Ken to keep up with him going through time. So that's not really, I don't see why people lowballed it. Because in my brain, you're thinking like, hmm. So if it's, it's kind of like, okay, let me give you an example. Like, it's kind of like if Flash was moving so fast, right? Like if Flash ran back, ran into the future to fight a future version of Superman, but Superman in the past. It's like, nah, son, I'm going to jump in front of you and, and go supersonic speed boom too and fight you right here and then. And they're just, you know, jumping, you know, running through the speed force and just fighting each other that's how i looked at it but a lot of people said that's not a speed feat but whatever goku is using instant transmission he's using his creativity he's using his spirit and his flow and he's using feints and things like this whereas vegeta is overall still more of a stiff and very serious and calculated fighter and goku takes advantage of that and in the super manga you can see despite them being very definitely equals uh, there's definitely no difference in their strength for the most part that's ever noted. They train for three years versus each other and they never- Grammarly God. helps you work more efficiently, which- Vegeta has to transform not to get caught lacking and get decked by Goku. And Goku- literally mocks Vegeta. Well, he doesn't mock Vegeta, but he, he basically talks to him. He's like, hey, Vegeta, why'd you transform? We're supposed to transform. Like, that's, that's cheating, dude. Like, why'd you do that? So Vegeta honestly did lose this third fight when it came to Dragon Ball Super. Although, I will admit, even then, it's sort of like, Goku does sort of still have, you know, the advantage for a lot of reasons I'm going to get into here. But, yeah, we'll get into that. A lot of their fights tend to be off-screen, however, such as the three-year time skip when they were in the hyperbolic time chamber for the Universe 6 arc. Now, it wasn't a three-year time skip, but they technically had a three-year time skip because they were in the chamber for three years, if that makes sense. Uh, and even after the Tournament of Power in the anime, they are shown fighting at the end, but we never see the results of it. Same thing starts off with the beginning of the Broly movie. They have fights. We never see the results. However, one thing that should be noted is that in Dragon Ball Super Hero, it seems like Goku mops Vegeta in all of these fights, like pretty concretely. So Goku is basically always mopping him, and there's no reason really he shouldn't, honestly. Like, throughout Super and most of Z, yeah, Vegeta does get a lot of power-ups. He's trying to find himself, but Goku's the main one who evolves as a fighter compared to Vegeta throughout all of this. Whereas, you know, Goku's learning about autonomous movement, Ultra Instinct, you know, like that insane say, oh, fighting instinct. spirit that amplifies his ability to dodge, react, and move. Vegeta is just sort of like enhancing his power level more and learning about his true pride and all of that. For the most part, up to the Tournament of Power, it definitely is the Goku show. So I'm not surprised at all by, by superhero Vegeta being like, yeah, Goku has always mopped me. But then again, by the time superhero does come around and they're fighting in base form, Vegeta does seem to win. So even though three out of the four fights we have kind of seen, unless I'm missing one, hope not, Vegeta seems to be on the upper hand. So it's kind of weird that Goku always seems to be noted as stronger, but whenever we do see them go at it, Vegeta seems to be the winner <laughs> every single time. But 
We then learn after the Tournament of Power when it comes to the Moro arc that Goku not only has these unfair advantages because of all his mentors, so the reason Goku gets Ultra Instinct to form beyond, you know, Kaioken times 20 or Evolution shown in the Tournament of Power is because his mentors throughout growing up, that nurture I was talking about earlier or hinted at, is sort of starting to evolve and coalesce finally, and it's starting to click in Goku's head. You know, whereas Goku is mainly training with these gods and sort of getting power-ups by training with strong people, the less... This is crazy, though, because we... All the angels are kind of broken. Like, they're OP as fuck, because we don't even know what they're truly capable of. Like, a lot of you have been questioning, they've been wanting Kira Toriyama to set up, like, an angel fight or a Beerus. Like, if, if they want to make Beerus as powerful as they say he is, give Beerus a fight, like a challenge. Fuck Goku and Vegeta. You know what I'm saying? I want to see Beerus duke it out with somebody and smack somebody. Like, go all out on somebody. Just be like, you know what? I'm not playing these games. I'm going to destroy you. <laughs> like that he could have did but and you know this is where Kurt Toriyama fumbled the ball that they should have did Moro versus Beerus instead of Moro versus Goku and Vita. he just could have came with a whole new villain for them to fight but Moro versus Beerus we were sick real sick since they were teaching him never really seemed to fully click with him and then when he finally gets determined to power and he has to learn they, all the lessons really start to flow into him. And that's why he's able to unlock Ultra Instinct, whether it be Korin teaching him how to move, Popo teaching him how to move, Master Roshi even teaches him how to move, even King Kai and Kami teach him how to move. Everyone's teaching Goku about this spiritual lesson and how to fight. And even on Yard Rat, they teach Goku about his inner self and his inner spirit, which allows him to use his power level more efficiently than you would be normally. So, not only is Vegeta overall an and extremely by the way, stiff person... Vegeta also learned this on Yard Jack too, which is why when he was... I don't, I don't know if y'all reading the Moral Hawk, but Vegeta was on Yard Jack training, too, and he pointed his finger, and usually Vegeta had... You know, Vegeta has complete control of his key, but when he pointed his finger that time after he finished his training, his key has significantly magnified, and when he pointed it, he shot a blast <laughs> by accident. He wasn't even trying to. He was just, like, pointing to, hey, man... Don't be doing that. And then next thing you know, a big key blast just came out here and just boom. And Vegeta was like, what the hell? I don't even try to so do to that. To begin with, that can't use his actual power very well. Goku, on top of already being able to use his power pretty well, then gets Yarger at training, which amps it even further. And so when you see in the Android arc that Vegeta surpasses Super Saiyan Goku, even though he just had this Yarger at training, you can start to see why that's more impressive and why Vegeta still has people's respect, even though Goku is always a lot stronger than him. So, one thing I like about the Moro arc is that it's like, hey, you know one reason Goku has all of these advantages and is learning Ultra Instinct is because he had, like, all these people teaching him stuff, and yeah, Vegeta can get stronger, he's a Saiyan, but, like, when is someone gonna teach him a thing or two that's different, or teach him how to use these different forms or let loose like Goku does to fight better and that's what the Moro arc did for him so by the time you know Miris trained Goku a literal angel trained Goku and Vegeta just did training that Goku did back on Namek Vegeta is arguably stronger than the training that the angel gave Goku so Goku gets this ultra instinct omen god technique power up way beyond the power of blue and then here comes vegeta with yardrat training finally learning how to use his power level properly and he's arguably just completely shattering and outdoing omen goku so well you can sort of see how goku's had a very unfair yeah, and that's why i like and a lot of people don't notice that because a lot of people was judging this fight they wasn't like paying more attention to vegeta because a lot of people were saying because people are just saying vegeta don't get a w he technically got a w over goku because his trainer made him jump over Omen Goku, uh, Omen sign Goku, which was crazy because he was dodging Moro's attack. And you got to realize Moro just got done pounding uh, Omen sign Goku and Vegeta just comes in and just like, yeah, I'm ducking this dude. Uh, 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 just hitting him straight body shots. And Moro's just like, what the hell is going on? Managed throughout most of the series. So even though Vegeta has arguably more potential, He's never had it necessarily unlocked like Goku did for the most part, but we do see eventually when Vegeta does get 
those same things. He's easily able to catch up to Goku. And a perfect example of that as well, that Goku did have his potential unlocked and Vegeta didn't, is that Vegeta, even though he was completely inferior to Goku, even base to base in the Buu Saga, the second Vegeta had his potential unlocked by Bobbity, and yes, he had his potential actually unleashed by Bobbity, even oh, after he came back potential. from the dead, and this is stated in the guidebooks, him and Goku are just equals. And base to base, they're equals now. And this is a perfect example of how when Vegeta gets the same treatment as Goku, he's able to do what he does. And now we see after all of these lessons, and now he's finally, you know, actually taking advice from other people, such as the God of Destruction, he's actually training with a unique mentor that Goku's not really. Zevo. People Which is what I like. I like that Vegeta has been trained by a God of Destruction. I love his Super Saiyan purple design. Hopefully Gohan Beast design looks better in the manga. Because that 3D CGI shit did not make it look good. It was fire. Obviously we got uh, uh, Omni Gohan. But I hope it looks better in the manga. Because that, that 3D CGI kind of ruined that transformation. I'm not going to lie. And that's where we get the form is sick. instinct to go. Go on. Versus Beast Ultra is sick. Ego Vegeta, it just, it was wrong with that CGI. Video. Now, I know it kind of took me a while to get to this point, but I felt like the that long, like almost 15 minute introduction is actually necessary for me to sort of exaggerate what I mean with this battle here. So, this will be the Granola arc. And so, one thing we do know about Ultra Instinct Goku, especially in the manga and the anime, is that. They're completely different for the most part. Well, they're not totally completely different, but in the anime, Ultra Instinct seems to be sort of this actual instinct-bound power-up where Goku, basically, the more obsessed or the more into the fight he can get and the more just completely enwrapped in the fires and the heats of battle he can get, the strongest instinct becomes and the strongest Ultra Instinct becomes. Whereas in the manga, it seems to be more about tranquility, you know, self-peace and things like that and controlling himself uh, and then eventually with his true ultra instinct he completely surpasses that concept by kind of like reaching more into what the anime was going for and i also wanted to get into that later but basically when it comes to ultra ego vegeto versus this ultra instinct goku they're both sort of in this pre-final instinct stage so yes true ultra instinct goku is stronger than vegeta but you also need to remember that vegeta truly hasn't found his own instinct form either or even though he has this god yeah, destruction and a lot of people don't know this either too ultra ultra uh what is ultra instinct what is it ultra ego vegeta I, i'm trying to think of an ultra ego vegeta but ultra ego vegeta for some all these instinct forms is tongue to his a lot of people don't understand that that's not even Vegeta's completed ultra. I mean, deep breath. His completed instinct form. That's not his complete form, because if it was, they would have said perfected ego Vegeta. That's what it would have been called. But Vegeta just unlocked this power, which means he's just not learning how to use it. So, in the next arc, we're probably going to see a perfected. Ultra Ego Vegeta, whenever the next art might be. Power up this Ultra Ego power up. You have to know that it's very similar to the white haired form of Goku in the sense that Vegeta's like, this isn't really me. So yeah, I got this power up, but like, I'm not really that guy. Like, I can't use this power to the utmost, just like Goku can't with his white haired form because, yeah, I mean, it's kind of who they are, but not really. So yes, Vegeta also probably will get like a true. Ultra ego form, just like Goku. Yeah, got true, true ultra, ultra ego form. form. I'm telling you, that's that's in the next arc. He's gonna get that. I bet a hundred dollars he's gonna get something like that. So I don't really want to compare those. I want to compare more the white haired form to the purple haired form. Another thing about true ultra instinct as well is that true ultra instinct, while yes, it does apply to the black omen form, and that's what Goku can mainly use it with. I think one thing you guys might find interesting is that the true ultra instinct power up also will apply to the white haired form eventually. And the anime, once again, does a better job of showing this than anything else. And in fact, I was gonna make a whole video about this, but I'll get into that at the end about true Ultra Instinct white form. But once again, this is just how they do against Granola. By the time we finally get to Ultra Instinct Goku and Ultra Ego Vegeta, it sort of starts out with Ultra Instinct Goku confronting Gas or whatever. And it turns out to just be a clone which Goku okay, he, absolutely he, he messed up right there. He called him Gaz. That's Granola, not Gaz. 
mess up with that. I'm finna correct him so people won't give him no backlash. That is granola, not gas. Gas is after this fight. Granola. So I have to correct my boy self. The real gas is like, yeah, that was a Naruto shadow. He says gas again. A clone. And I know that the longer you're in your form, the less accurate you are. And then he one shots it. And then Vegeta has to step in and fight a much stronger granola. And then he goes ultra ego and pushes granola to unlock his double Mengekyo Sharingan basically and become the strongest in the universe. And then it's described that ultra ego Vegeta is the most dangerous man in the universe and surpassed granola, which is a statement that Goku did not have. So you would think, oh, well, Vegeta and ultra ego is definitely stronger than ultra instinct at this moment, right? But as you actually read the arc, you start to notice, well, why do Goku and Vegeta seem kind of equal? You know, give or take, like when they fight together versus gas and so on, they don't seem like one's necessarily doing way better than the other. So what's happening here? And there's actually a lot of statements and guides and so on. But in interviews, Toyotaro says Vegeta has seemed to have caught up to Goku when he gets Ultra Ego. So he's implying, you know, Ultra Ego and Ultra Instinct are equivocal. And then he says, but, you know, that's not exactly the case. Whereas Uchida, the editor for Dragon Ball Super, says, you know, the whole point of Ultra Ego is for Vegeta to get a form that was on par with Ultra Instinct, basically, so that, you know, Vegeta will be relevant or whatever. And, you know, isn't it cool that Goku and Vegeta are equals? So you know, the editor says they're equals, but Toyotaro says, oh, it looks like Vegeta caught up to him, but there's, there's a catch. So the catch is obviously that Ultra Ego seems to be more of a rival for this mastered Ultra Instinct form that's not at full power. And what I mean by that is, to use the silver haired or perfect ultra instinct form or even true ultra instinct it requires a lot of mental boundaries uh, and that goku does not have full control over during this arc so you might be like hey seth why was ultra instinct in the moro arc so insanely giga chad and then in the granola arc it seems kind of weird and like it has like a shorter time frame than like kaioken even almost it, it seems kind of weird right well, the point of it is, is that Goku's mindset doesn't allow him to just use the full Ultra Instinct all the time, even though he has the training. And on top of that, it seems that the Master Ultra Instinct form also has a Susano that Goku can kind of just whip out. So it seems as though Ultra Ego seems to be... Bro, I, I can't scratch this out enough, but I wish Toritaro Kirito Yama would not made it a, a freaking avatar of Goku. They should have made it like the monkey form, because that's what their pride race are i don't know i, I don't know if kira toriyama did that was it toritaro did it but either way that that avatar of a, a giant goku is so stupid it would have been sick if it was the monkey form because then it would be, be like a a a a white energy key great ape thing bro it would it would have been sick that would have made people lose their fucking mind because then they wouldn't care if goku used it because it it's a great ape. Paired to this nerfed white-haired form, if anything. And the nerfed white-haired form still is very powerful. I mean, it dominated gas when it was at full power. It just wasn't able to retain it. And I'd honestly say that this nerfed white-haired form would probably lose to Ultra Ego just due to, like, the time limits and the fact that Ultra Ego is, like, relative in power, at least. So it just... And I hate that they're doing this trying to nerf Ultra Ego. I mean, nerf... Ultra Instinct Goku, which is so stupid, dude. It's so dumb. It's like, why? Why make the form if you're gonna try to nerf it? It's like me if I gave my character old power form. I'm like, oh man, I made him too busted. Now I gotta nerf his ass. I see me. I wouldn't do that. I would just get creative. I just make an old power ass villain. Make all my overpower ass villain. I just make them all gods and deities and shit where you have to fight. But this is just like, man, like, cause. It's like they backed themselves into a corner and didn't think none of this stuff through when they introduced Beerus and Whis and stuff. And it's like they're in a hole and they're trying to dig themselves out. That's longer, but I'm also going to get into further detail why Vegeta isn't fully out of the race just yet, even with that information. So by the end of it all, it does look like Ultra Ego, even if you want to say it's somehow initially weaker than Ultra Instinct, there is a lot more evidence that it would probably win in a fight. And this is actually further displayed as well when Gas appears. Vegeta and Goku are fighting Gas, 
Vegeta's like, hey, dude, like, my Ultra Ego's evolving still. Like, I'm getting stronger. And you're, like, the same guy, basically. You know, it's kind of weird that I'm evolving my form more than you. Isn't this your thing? Like, so Ultra Ego Vegeta is kind of like, why am I surpassing Goku? Why am I evolving more than Goku? And then Goku's like, I need to look deep. I need to find something else. And then he gets the true Ultra Instinct. So in terms of the white-haired form versus the purple-haired form, it does seem like Ultra Ego would have the upper hand if they did fight. However, this is what I wanted to bring up that I foreshadowed a bit earlier, is that the white-haired form will still probably be relevant. Uh, and it's not just the white-haired form versus the purple-haired form, but they're basically their mindset or their perspective on their own instinct or their own selves that kind of empowers these forms. So even though True Ultra Instinct is technically a form, even with the black hair, I do, and this is just my hypothesis, that it will apply to the white-haired form as well. And this is actually shown in the gas fight where you see Goku go into the white-haired form, and then you see basically that Susano appear, and then he goes to help out against gas. And I think that's true Ultra Instinct merging with the white-haired form, which is still kind of an anomaly in itself. Like, what does a Susano have to do with automated movement? There's something else we're not getting. But this is shown in the Term of Power as well. Basically, in the Term of Power, despite the white-haired form being this tranquil form, this self-movement form, we see in the anime that Goku actually utilizes basically true Ultra Instinct or anger or his emotions with the white-haired form. And even though Jiren unlocks this hidden power and arguably gets amped, even though he might be a little bit restricted due to his mentality, Jiren might actually be nerfed in this fight, as crazy as that sounds, which might make him more relevant in the future, but that's a side point. But basically, Goku, despite getting kind of beat up by hidden power Jiren, once he controls his emotions and he uses his emotions as a power-up, he bullies the pit out of Jiren, which is sort of foreshadowing this... I'm also going to make another prediction. Watch how they're going to get Jiren Ultra Instinct. They're going to get some Jiren some type of instinct from Watch. He gonna, he either he gonna get buffer or he gonna get skinnier like Goku. True Ultra Instinct. And I wouldn't be surprised if what Goku did against Moro, where he used the Susano, was also True Ultra Instinct mixed with the Mastered Ultra Instinct form and White Haired form. And so by the way, you guys, I got two good videos coming. I got Goku versus Superman and Jiren versus Superman. If Goku was able to use his True Ultra Instinct, like emotional power ups versus. Vegeta ego with his white haired form, the white haired form would win. But I think normally, like the imperfect version, Vegeta would probably win. And once again, I will say this again Vegeta probably will get his own true ultra ego form as well. I mean, like, get, get real. That's literally the correlation or the similarities between their forms. They both were using forms not true to themselves. So, with that out of the way, I would say that it does seem like Vegeta has a more impressive track record versus them. But I will say, you know, Goku beating up Vegeta apparently for three years straight in the time chamber probably means that Goku's win record is probably a bit higher. <laughs> we just haven't seen it. So other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Yeah, I agree with everything that Seth said. We we I already know we're going to get a new Vegeta form. Like, it's coming in the next art. Hopefully they have Gohan in there, Piccolo in there, Gotenks and Trunks are much older. They should be getting some fights too. They just need to come up with good villains. Good villains for each of our heroes to fight. Instead of it being the Goku and Vegeta show. And they have their own children just sitting on the sideline. Because what if Goku and Vegeta fail. And, Go and Gohan and Gotenks and Trunks got to step in. And let me tell you right now. Trunks would get so much clout. Because Trunks is very famous. He is a cool, cool character. Cool character. If Kirito Young go back to his old design. How he used to be. But I digress. But anyways you guys. Let me know if you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you enjoy my Dragon Ball Z content. Make sure you like and subscribe and drop them comments below for me. You guys smash that Black Freezer video and that Goku vs. Saitama video. So I will be pumping out more Dragon Ball Z content for you guys. So stay tuned. Peace, I'm out.